I'm Lynn Staley, and I'm going to talk about today about uh, what parents should know about a variety of problems, such as flat feet, in towing, bent legs, and shoes for children. I'm Professor Emeritus at the University of Washington at Seattle Children's Hospital. And my message is that the conditions are very common, these variations, and they resolve with growth and do not require any so-called treatments. And this video provides more details of each condition. And the printed copies of this uh, message have been printed over 100,000 times and have been used uh, throughout the world and in six languages. The first topic is flat feet. And parents worry about their children's flat feet. But these are really normal in infants and a lot of children and adults. And if you look at the feet of different ages, you notice that the infant nearly all have fl flat feet from their footprint. And the arch gradually develops with time. But about 20% of adults uh, don't have an arch as well. And if they have uh, flexible flat feet, they can be strong and pain-free, and they don't cause any problems. And those who usually don't develop an arch tend to be loose-jointed. And if you're concerned about the arch in the infant, you can see that they have an arch by unweighting the foot, letting it dangle, and you have an arch. Or if the child stands and toe stands, then they develop an arch uh, when that happens. So just as children are, have different heights, they also have different heights of their arch as well. So some are developed and some are uh, fairly low and others are flat. And these are normal, just like variations of height. And also, did you know that putting uh, various pads under the shoes really is just a waste of money? And we're concerned uh, about the flat foot, if it's stiff and that's particularly a problem, or if it's very painful or very severe. And we're most concerned if the arch is very high because these are the people, these are the children that develop problems when they're adults or may have an underlying problem that's created the high arch. The next subject is in-towing. And in in-towing is very common in childhood. And in infants often in tow like their footprints. And then the leg uh, uh, turns out gradually with growth so that in mid-childhood they tend to be straight ahead. And in the late childhood or adult life, they tend to tow out a little bit. And if they, in the infant, if they have in towing, it's usually due to three causes. The first is the so-called hooked foot, or metatarsus adductus. And this is due to tight inner uterine position, which con contracts or constricts the foot. So that as a child, uh, the infant uh, is free to move about, the, the foot straightens out over a period of about 12 months. So no treatment is necessary as it gets better on its own. And only in rare cases is any kind of treatment necessary. The most common problem is tibial torsion. As a tibia it tends to turn out gradually with growth, and this is a normal developmental pattern. And if it's on one side, it's most likely on the left side. And again, no treatment is necessary because of normal variation. Another common problem for in towing is so-called femoral aniversion syndrome, in which the legs turn in and the kneecaps turn in, and this is usually on both sides. And the children often sit this way. And most, most, in most cases, it's most severe about four or five, six years of age. And yet generally it's outgrown in late childhood, so it's usually gone by, by uh, the end of, end of the first decade. And again, certain treatments are really not necessary. It's not necessary to change the sitting hab pattern because this is because of the, of the uh, femoral uh, an aniversion increase, not the cause of it. So hounding your child is changed position and is really not necessary or desirable. Another common problem are bow legs and knock knees. And again, there's a normal developmental pattern. And the infant tends to have knock knee or bow legs. And with uh, growth, usually four to six or so, they become a little knock kneed. And then they tend to straighten out over a period of time. So if these are, if these are the usual patterns and they, they're not excessive, uh, it's not necessary to do anything about it. And special shoes and wedges and so forth don't really make any difference. And we're only concerned if it's very severe or if there's a problem with it. People often ask about shoes. What's best for the kid? Well... Uh, we do know that the barefooted people have the best feet. And so shoes should simulate going barefooted as much as possible. So the first thing, they should be as large enough 
so as to not cramp the foot. They should also be flexible uh, so the foot can move normally and the muscles can develop in a normal fashion. Also, the material, especially in hot climates, should be breathable so it doesn't really cause sweating or discomfort in the child. And one should also avoid odd shapes, particularly the pointed toes and the high heel, because these can actually cause problems such as bunions. So in summary, most variations of normal are outgrown and your doctor can be consulted if necessary to make sure that is going normally. And remember that the best thing you can do for your child is to encourage physical activity, avoid overeating, and remember that the so-called corrective devices don't really change anything and just make your child unhappy. So it's best to let the magic of time and growth solve the problem because Mother Nature's treatment is safe, inexpensive, and effective. So do you want a copy of this uh, material to show the rest of the family or a poster for your clinic? You can get this by going to our website at global-help.org. Uh, note here. And then put in what parents and click on this and and this will be searched for and you can download the PDF of your choice in one of six language options. So thank you very much for watching and send me any comments at staley at uw.edu.